All right, so we've got a system in here that we reviewed. This is the uh, MSI AMD EPIC 4005 platform, and it is not the biggest, it is not the baddest, it is not the most storage, it's not the most I.O. It's designed to do exactly what you want it to do. And okay. by that performance, basically think of it as a desktop in rack form. A desktop in rack form with enterprise features not often found in desktops, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where this AMD EPIC 4005 kind of fits in, where you're happy about the performance of your, um, let's say your Ryzen CPU, or you have an application where you are focused entirely on minimal cores and just really high clock speed. Right. This is going to give it to you, and you want ECC memory. You want out-of-band management. You want those things that you're not going to find on a normal Ryzen box, and it's not going to fit in your data center or in two, your, two yeah. power supplies, things like that. Right. Yeah, so last time we looked at the uh, this Epic 4000 series, it was the 4004. Last year, we made it into a, a gaming server. We actually had a bunch of them. And at the time, I think what we really highlighted is that the 4004 Epic delivered exactly what service providers wanted. They wanted to be able to rent out bare metal instances of a server with just enough spec to do what you need to do. Well, yeah, I mean, you're looking at something where if you step up from this to a 9004, 9005 series CPU, your CPU on that side is gonna cost more than this entire thing. Right, and I don't know what the final price point of this is, but this is very affordable, especially in volume. Now, I was joking at the, at the run-in about not having a lot, and there's not a lot going on here. If we start at the front, we've got in our configuration just four bays that are uh, three and a half inch. Yeah, those are SATA. I can't even say SATA SAS. These are just SATA. SATA. Which is okay, because they're just designed to get the job done. We used, though, uh, these 30 terabyte SATA Exos hammer drives, a touch excessive for this configuration. But maybe, but I mean, if you want to do your own integrated backup, I mean, it's a, you have a ton of storage space, you're probably not, well, I could say, you're definitely not putting your application on hard drives, 7200 RPM uh, hard drives. Probably not. But it gives you the storage necessary to get the job done. And it that's, does. That's not all though, it actually has a couple more bays. All right, well, let's get into that. The Dragon did come in our box, and uh, what do you think his name is? I... Freddy? Lit off, and two things stand out right away, relatively spartan design and the liquid loop. Yes, this guy has a closed loop uh, cooling setup, which you would think it would allow, to, uh, allow the system to operate in a uh, quieter fashion. It Typically. does not. Okay. It is quite aggressive and very loud, but it performs fairly well in terms of uh, cooling it. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting platform. They offer both a uh, air-cooled and liquid-cooled variant, and in most data centers, you're probably not concerned that much about noise. No, although I would prefer the fans were a little quieter, but when you get into these 1U dense systems, the 1U fans just scream like banshees, right? Yeah. And uh, you may not hear the screams in space, but you do hear them in the data center. Yes, this was kind of like a dentist drill. Yeah, so this is noisy, but you do have this nice radiator chunk here. You've got, what do we have, seven fans, and then just a basic in and out on this loop. And I didn't look at the service manual for this particular system, but these are normally rated at like a five-year window. Yeah, we've seen that across the board where around five years, uh, they're expecting you to probably swap them out. And that's, it's not really a fluid swap. It's just you start getting um, buildup in the heat sink itself. And right. they're just not as efficient as um, uh, moving fluid through. And a lot of vendors are like, just replace the uh, cooling loop. Yeah, that's one thing. With every cold plate there's inside, there's all these little ridges and the... Turbulators. The, in some. I mean, that's part of the IP that differentiates the, uh, the, the heat sinks. But any little bit of buildup that starts to get in there reduces the flow, like a artery in a heart that uh, eventually needs a, a stent. We cannot put a stent in the system, so you replace it every so often. But lest you think it's difficult, this pops off and you swap out the CPU just like anything else yeah, because we did put a 4004 in here for our review. Yeah, we, do, uh, we tested two CPUs side by side to kind of show the performance uplift the, uh, between the generations. And these are just kind of like semi-rigid PVC pipes underneath. They have some flexibility, they're not like a rubber hose, but it's enough where you can lift and move the thing around to uh, get the job done. You said rubber hose. All I can think of is up your nose with a rubber hose, which is a <laughs> classic, classic statement no. from 1982 maybe
Hey, Carla, up your nose with your rubber hose. Ah! Uh, so we can probably omit that reference, but Vince will leave it in because he hates me. Uh, we've got four dim slots. You mentioned ECC. So you can get this same sort of power and you can even get it into a chassis like this from Ryzen, but you don't get some of the enterprise features and ECC is one of them. Yeah, ECC memory support on the uh, 4004, 4005 line. Right. You can use Ryzen CPUs on this and then obviously leverage a normal DDR5 memory. But if you want to leverage ECC, this gives you that option. You also have uh, out-of-band management. There's a lot of cool stuff on here, or I should say, there's just enough cool just stuff enough on here. Just enough cool yes. stuff. And yes. this, this is a one you box, so it's not going to be as, uh, I think the other models that we looked at in the past, uh, you could fit a little more into it. Full height, uh, double width uh, GPUs. This guy is set up with a uh, full height uh, by 16 slot, so since there's not a lot of room in here for a normal, like full size GPU, we just put a little baby uh, slot powered uh, NVIDIA L4 inside of here, which gave it some GPU performance. There is NVMe, as Kevin promised. They're just tucked away underneath here in the form of M.2. Yeah, and these support both the uh, 80 mil and 110 mil uh, uh, NVMe drives, which. I mean, right, the capacity is up to eight terabytes now. Yeah, we just reviewed a Samsung model with eight terabytes of uh, uh, capacity. So you could get up to 16 terabytes of NVMe storage inside this platform. And uh, along with those uh, four hard drive slots, right. there's two uh, two and a half inch uh, SATA bays kind of buried Tuck, underneath, underneath here. And those, yeah. yeah, it's just power and SATA connections, but it's something where they're serviceable. You have, you have to remove another part of the cover, but it's kind of like a cold swap part. You could put your OS there, keep these for your data, keep the NVMe for whatever apps or high performance needs, right? Yeah, there is onboard 10 gigs. So even with the uh, single uh, PCI slot, you still have two 10 gig ports in and out of the box. So we did, I told you, put the 4004 in it, one of the 16 core CPUs we had from the last review. And it's not head to head because they're slightly different class than this one. Uh, the 16 cores is, is interesting because that's optimized for Windows licensing for Windows Server. That's kind of like your, your per license limit. Well, yeah, in that, Another way to say that is if you buy anything less than 16 uh, core, you have cores left on the table of what your license could support. Right, so 16 cores sort of the target, just like you know the olden days when people bought VMware all the time and wanted 32 core licenses, but that is sort of out the window at this point. We shall not digress into that. However, optimized for service providers, for customers that want to run Windows. So when we looked at performance, we've got the whole report and I'll link to that in, in the description. Anything stand out in the generational shift between 4004 to 4005? Uh, I mean, it's you're not looking at night and day performance differences. There are measurable though. So we're comparing the uh, top end 16 core against the not very top end 16 core of the prior generation. 4004, right. And we saw about a 10% increase on the Y cruncher side. So total compute performance. Right. Um, so modest uplift in performance. And again, this processor, or these processors in general, are fantastic for single thread performance. Mm -hmm. You have really high cl uh, clock speeds across the board, which you really don't find on those 32, 64, 192 core CPUs on the, on the high-end enterprise side. It's, so It's so, somewhat counterintuitive though, right? Because you think value skew 16 cores, but that single thread performance, as you note, is really the differentiator for this guy. Yeah, not, all, not every application needs infinity cores thrown. Sometimes you just need a really fast clock speed. Yeah, and to that end, that's why we've taken the time, besides the Dragon, to take this thing apart and, and show you this. And I was joking at the start, it's not the best at anything except for what it actually is. And it's meant to be really good for service providers that want bare metal rentals that are SKU optimized for Windows and really freaking affordable. Yes, and if you fit in that little metric, it's performant. I mean, you're getting pretty, oh, you're getting really high-end desktop performance in a light enterprise chassis. Yeah, so we bring it up mostly because, you know, we get so wrapped up sometimes in 192 cores, 200 whatever ever cores, all the E3S bays, all the 15,000 megasecond, uh, or gigasecond, no, 15,000 megasecond uh, SSDs and all the things that we can do with high-end systems, GPU servers, AI servers, and none of that matters here. This is a, a specifically built system 
for mid-range blocking and tackling, and MSI has done an excellent job here, AMD has done an excellent job here, and we suspect that there will be many, many, many of these systems or systems like this sold in the in the uh, cloud hosting provider world, and uh, for good reason. It's it's quite exquisite for what it is. Yeah, I was thinking on the pricing side. I mean, we've looked at SSDs where that SSD is probably more in cost than this entire thing. So there's <laughs> there's a huge difference between light enterprise and heavy enterprise uh, in cost and performance. But it just depends on what your needs are, and you don't really want to vastly overbuy something you don't need. You will not uh, want to do that. This is perfectly scaled for the solutions it's targeted after. So we've got all the benchmarks, all the SKU list, all the details in the review. As I said, that'll be linked in the uh, description. So for now, we leave you with the thought that you don't always need the highest and best of everything that sometimes perfectly entry level is perfectly fine. Yes. <laughs>